Hello and welcome to Market Briefing. I'm Martin Backerdax, European Business Editor here at the IB Times UK. Well, we're seeing a fourth consecutive advance for European stock markets, but it's modest at the moment, and it will be interesting to see if investors can hang on to the gains after the U.S. Open a little bit later this afternoon. Effectively, what they're betting on right now is the anticipation of a rate cut tomorrow from the European Central Bank after its meeting in Bratislava. Now, part of the argument for that rate cut was again delivered today by some gloomy economic data out of Germany. A very significant survey of business sentiment from the IFO Institute in Munich suggested that business confidence slipped for the second consecutive month in April and really does suggest that the spillover, not only from the Cyprus bailout, but from also perhaps the coldest weather in at least 25 years in the month of March are really hitting business implications in Europe's largest economy. The current climate index declined as well as the expectations and indeed the current conditions portion of the index. So it was indeed grim reading, but maybe, just maybe investors are thinking that along with yesterday's uh, indication of activity around Germany and indeed the Eurozone suggests that the ECB might be moved to lower its refinancing rate from the current 0.75%. Many people are skeptical about that, though, and suggest that the bank is more likely to focus on what it calls the unconventional measures that it's using at present to add liquidity into the marketplace, particularly ways in which that the ECB can direct loans to smaller businesses, not only in Germany, but around the periphery of the Eurozone as well, who are really struggling to find the kind of capital they need to expand, to hire, and to ultimately engender some economic growth. Now, that's a similar problem with the Bank of England, and from its perspective, it's very unlikely to lower its own lending rate of 0.5% next week, or indeed tinker with the program of quantitative easing, which sits at $375 billion. What the bank is more likely to do, and seems to have suggested today, is focus on its own unconventional measures, and that being the funding for lending scheme. It's extended that today by one year, and it's opened up some of the parameters under which banks which participate can lend money to small businesses. The idea, again, is to drive liquidity to some of these smaller operations. Basically, banks will be able to borrow more money against loans that they extend this year and less money against loans that they delay until next year. The incentive obviously uh, relatively apparent and the Bank of England wants to drive more cash into the real economy. Not exactly sure whether it's going to work but nonetheless it's another step and again another suggestion that interest rates are at rock bottom and probably aren't going to move any more. One of the stock we're watching today, or so one important stock that we're watching today, is Barclays. It's been up and down throughout most of the morning session. They delivered first quarter earnings where they had a 25% fall in the bottom line down to about 1.8% billion sterling. Now, a big portion of that, around 500 million, is indeed linked to its transform restructuring program. Effectively, they're going to cut a whole lot of jobs, trim down the operations, and really try to change the culture in the bank that, it must be remembered, was the first and probably the most serious to be implicated in the LIBOR rate-fixing scandal. Scores of senior executives have gone, and of course, most famously, the former CEO, Bob Diamond, as well as the former chairman, Marcus Aegis. Anthony Jenkins is at the helm right now. He is insistent that his program is on track. It's going to deliver the goals that he wants with respect to changing the bank's culture and, indeed, business practices, but that may mean investors are going to have to settle with lower shareholder returns as a result. He's warned about that in the past, and that seems to be indicative with respect to the results today. Nonetheless, there was a one penny per share dividend that was announced by Barclays, and as a result, investors seem to be, at least from my perspective, parsing the results and sort of anticipating what it's going to mean into future quarters and what it means now for the share price. At one stage, it was down about 1.5%. It rose as much as 3% at one point in the morning session right now. It's a little change from where it closed on Tuesday. It'll be interesting to see over the next few days exactly how investors read these figures and where they expect Britain's sec second biggest bank to head in the coming months. You can check all that out and a whole lot more on the Economy page. We'll see you tomorrow.